everybody. I hope you're having an awesome day. Um, I am here with another Back to Basics installment of my um, videos. So first, my name is Wendy and I'm a retired art educator. But I always say once an art teacher, always an art teacher. I'm here to help you and sometimes your kids get crafty, get creative. <laughs> Stumbling over my words. Get crafty, get creative and bring out your inner artist. So today, and, and by the way, I'm also a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, which means I um, love paper crafting and I love sharing it with people. I represent the best paper crafting supply company there is Stampin' Up! So today we're going to talk for best, Back to Basics what I think are the three most crucial basic, basic tools um, besides stamps and, and inks and all that, but the three tools you need to make a card, okay? Yes, you need stamps. Yes, you need inks. Yes, you need um, those kind of things. I've already done those videos, but these are some of the things that will make your life much easier when you are paper crafting. So, today we're going to talk cleaners and cutters, okay? Cleaning and cutting, the two C's. Okay, three things that I think you need in the cleaning and cutting um, category, okay, to make cards and scrapbooking. So, I'm going to show you, I'm going to flip the camera. Okay, flip this. Now, um, I didn't put up my fancy uh, work area because we're not crafting, I'm not making anything today. I am simply showing you some things. Now, in our annual catalog that comes out every year, in the back, we have all the accessories and things you might need. In the front part is all the stamps and all the, that goodies, the papers. But in the back is, is the, the nitty-gritty things that you really, the tools, okay? And the first thing I want to talk about is cleaners. When you are stamping with rubber stamps, you need to clean them off after you have stamped something. Um, you don't want that to sit too long. It will stain it. Not that it will really hurt. It really won't hurt the stamp, but I like to keep mine clean so that I don't get a little residue. Maybe if I change the color, I don't want the first color showing, so on. So, cleaners in our catalog are on page 149, and there are a couple different types, okay? There is the stamp and scrub, which I'm going to show you in a second, and the, the simply, simply chamois. Okay, there's that and that. Let me show you the stamp and scrub first. This is oh, my catalog over here. This is the stamp and scrub. And oops, let me get this down here. There we go. And it opens up like so. And what I like to do, and it, it comes with, or it doesn't come with, you have to buy it separately, and this is their old bottle. I, you can buy, the bottle um, that it comes in is much bigger, and you can refill it. And I just like to refill my small one, and I keep my big one on the shelf, and I just refill when I need it. I've had this forever, so they've changed the, des the design. But this is Stampin' Mist, and you simply spray the Stampin' Mist, on one side. Now these are kind of velour-ish. I don't know how you would describe it. They're um, I can't see it. You probably can't. No, but it's like soft, but yet scrubby um, on both sides. And so I always spray one side is my wet side, one side is my dry side. So, and I even went ahead and used some like white out, a white Sharpie, if you can see that and I painted this one side and I wrote wet so that I will always know and nothing's on this side. So I will always know this is my wet side. That way if I take it to a class or something, my, my stampers that I'm teaching also know this is wet side, this is dry side. So you take your, your stamp and you scrub it on the wet side, you scrub it on the dry side and it is clean. Now the cool thing is these, I'm not gonna pop it out right now, but these, um, Oh, maybe I will. No, I don't want to break a nail. <laughs> goodness, goodness knows I don't want to break. It's pretty nice. Um, but these these scrubs do pop out and you can wash them. You can just, I wash them in the sink with a little bit of dish soap, wash them real good, rinse them real good, let them dry, and they're good to go. I haven't washed these in like ages, so I probably, if I scrub real hard, I'd probably get stuff all over me. But 
That's our Stampin' Scrub. I like it a lot. Like it, like it. The other type of cleaner is our chamois. Now, it does not come in this in this um, metal, almost like a DVD case. But you could use a DVD case. Um, you could use one of our stamping cases. You could put this in a plastic bag. It doesn't matter. Now, mine is well-loved. But you see that purple color? That's the color that it was. <laughs> and it was hard. You know those sponges that you get that are small? They're like thin and hard. And then you put them in water and they go... They expand, right? Kind of the same thing here. They don't expand all that much, but it comes dry. You soak it in water and it fluffs up. And it's just, it's a chamois, okay? You can use both sides. When it gets kind of dirty, run it under water, squeeze it a few times, get some of the ink out of it, and use it again, okay? I have a couple of these that I keep around, especially for classes. These are great. Um, and my friend Susan is the one who got, who found these things. But like I said, a DVD case, a, a um, uh, Ziploc bag to keep it moist. I only wet this thing about once every two weeks because I keep it protected like this. So this, you just rub the stamp on it and it's, and it's clean. Okay. So that, those are our two cleaners. So cleaning, and you don't need Stampin' Mist for the chamois. You do need Stampin' Mist for the scrub. Stamp of the chamois you just in water. Okay? Now, the other must have tools for paper crafting you've got to be able to clean your stamps and you've got to be able to cut. You've got to be able to cut. And our cutting tools, um, cutting and scoring. Our cutting and scoring tools are on page 155. We've got the two I'm going to highlight today are our snips, our paper snips, and our trimmer. Okay, so I'll show you the snips first. You need to have some good, fine pointed, where's the camera, snips. Now, you'll see these are kind of yucky. I need to clean them. I clean them with um, Goo Gone, okay, because sometimes I cut sticky things and um, they get gummy and I have to, so, so please know that they come nice and clean and beautiful. Uh, but I use mine a lot. These snips are great. You've got to have some good scissors. You've got to be able to cut clear to the end of the scissors. You know how some scissors don't cut all the way to the end? Like, I don't know, my sewing scissors kind of do. These are my sewing scissors. Um, and those of you who sew or you, whatever, I, I write all over them. Cloth and yarn only. And I'll catch my husband in here like, I just need to cut this one thing, this one paper thing. No, don't do it. Um, I've always kind of wanted to put on here, I will cut you. <laughs> Literally, if you cut paper with those. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> paper snips, you got to have them. Stampin' Ups are great, and they're only, I mean, they're uh, they're $11, but they are worth it. I have had mine forever. As long as you clean them every once in a while, you are good to go. Okay? And the other thing is my trimmer. I love, 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 love my trimmer. Um, and I usually put it this way. This little um, sticky ruler does not come with it. It comes with measurements here and on this end, so you can see on either way. It comes, um, this was something I added. Um, anyway, uh, it comes with an, an arm that comes out in case you're cutting bigger paper, 12 by 12s or whatever. I rarely use that, but it's there if you need it. Um, it has a little ledge along here, so if you're cutting six by six or something, it's going to stop right there. So that's really handy when I'm cutting, um, when I know it's six inches, right there. Okay, um, this comes up here. Let me grab a little piece of paper. Oh, I don't want to grab that one. That's a good piece of paper. All right, here's a piece of white. So you flip this up by, there's a little spot for your thumb, and you go like this. Now you'll notice, first of all, you'll notice there's two blades. Dark is cutting, light is scoring. Sometimes you need to score. You need to make a card that folds in half. You score, and so on. So make sure when you're cutting, you use the dark, and when you're scoring, you use the light, because many times I have gone to score something and I've cut it. Not good. Okay, so flip it up. Place your, I like to place at the bottom. Some people like to do it at the top and go up. I prefer put it at the bottom and go down. It's just personal, whatever. 
Um, so let's say I want to cut a two inch piece. I come over here and I put my edge on the two. It does have an inch and a half over on, or almost two inches on the right side too. So you could, let's say I wanted to do an inch, I could do an inch over here on this side. But I'm gonna do two inches, line it up, bring it right down against this ledge. It'll be nice, and there's a little ledge right here. So it'll be nice and straight. Put your guard down and easy as that. You can buy replacement blades if your blade starts to get dull, but I will tell you it lasts forever, your blade, your blade will, unless you're doing a ton of cutting. Um, but you can buy those in a little four pack and they're not much. Okay, and then the scoring blade, I'm not gonna show you right now, but well, yeah, I will. Okay, I'll score this at one and a half, about that. Scoring, I don't know if you can see that. Makes it much easier to fold. Yeah, do that and score. So, let me flip this up. So there you have it, my top three actually four, if you count the two cleaners. My top three things that I think you need, top three basic tools. Cutting, cleaning. Scissors, trimmer, something to clean your stamps with. So I hope you found this informative. Um, let me know what you think. I would love to have comments. Uh, and I will talk to y'all later. Have a good day.